Peggy 18. Information on this. That's right, it is Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition. First up, we have a presentation for you. Uh, during this presentation, Matt Walker, the producer, Itano Hideaki, also uh, the director, and Kumabe Junya, the main planner, will be talking about this title for you. It is going to be a video, however. Guys, are you all ready? All right, it's time! TGS Live 2020. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? I am Matt Walker, the producer of Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition. I'm really happy to be here. But I've brought along two very special guests tonight. The first being a game industry legend, legend director Itsuno Hideaki. Uh, dude, why do you have to introduce me in such an embarrassing way? Uh, my name is Itsuno, I am the director. I can't help it, man. You made so many of my favorite games. You know, I'm always saying this on Capcom TV, but I'm very happy that we get to work together. And now, uh, my second guest is Capcom's most stylish game designer, Uchi Hiranomachi's very own Junya Kumabe. Hi, I'm the main planner on DMC5 SE. It's been a while, everyone. Yeah, you've been on Capcom TV quite a few times. So, first up, I do just want to apologize to everyone. We really wanted to show off Devil May Cry 5 special edition from the studio but circumstances being what they are it was not to be we are sorry yeah we really wanted to go huh but on the upshot this means that we can give you the information straight from the source so let's start with this enjoy That day, if our positions were switched, would our fates be different? Would I have your life and you mine? You're a demon. And that was great! I really like that trailer. Me too. It's really cool, right? Of course, there's still a lot that's being kept under wraps. But I think it shows off most of the good stuff. You know, the background music in the trailer is a new song, right? What's it called again? Good question. The theme song for 5 was Devil Trigger, right? 
Well, this is a new song by Casey Edwards, the artist who wrote that, made just for SE. They brought in a new vocalist as well. Nice. So this game is, oh, this song is called Bury the Light, and it is Virgil's battle theme. So they're asking, like, what is, how do you say that in Japanese? And he's just saying, literally, Bury the Light in Japanese. Um, <laughs> <laughs> look, it's like, he's saying, look, it's like, I'm absolutely terrible at translation interpreting, but it's got a deep meaning, okay? You just have to believe me. And I think you'll come to understand the meaning of the song's title if you think about it as you play through the game. So, Bury the Light is available on iTunes and other streaming platforms, so please give it another listen if you like what you heard. Devil May, 5, uh, Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition is set to launch day and date with the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series K. Uh, X. Same day launches are a lot of work, huh? So, all we can really say at this point is that it's going to be a launch title. But it's a PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X launch title. So, uh, since the special edition tagline. So the idea is to use all the power and capabilities of this next-gen hardware to bring you an even more enjoyable Devil May Cry 5 experience. So we've used that next-gen power and tech in a few different ways, and I'd like to go on about them. Uh, first up is ray tracing. Ray tracing is a system for calculating the reflection of light to make it look more realistic. This is something uh, that we can only do on next-gen hardware. One place that its benefits are obvious is how much better the reflections of the player and the background look in puddles on the floor. Uh, another good example is when you see the player's reflection in a window. You can really see that the light's reflection is being uh, calculated properly. So, you know, Intel now, we've done a pretty good job of faking it without ray tracing using the hardware we've had up until now, uh, but this time it's the real deal. It's all being calculated. It also, like, really improves atmospheric effects. Um, you'll be able to see that on some videos and slides uh, that show how this looks and compare them and see the difference. Yeah, the dev teams were hard at work on all of this. Next-gen consoles can do a lot more than just ray tracing, though. Uh, so we wanted to utilize all of their capabilities. So another thing we've added is high frame rate mode. If you activate high frame rate mode and you're using a monitor that supports 120 hertz, it'll let you play the game at a blistering 120 frames per second. On top of that, we also have 3D audio. So if you're playing with headphones, uh, you'll be able to experience a depth of sound and a sense of 3D presence like never before. Dude, you sound like a next-gen infomercial. Uh, I mean, duh, that's what we're going for. We're making a next-gen title, so it'd be waste not to use all of the next-gen features um, for the next gen, get all that next-gen power out. You know, aside from all of that, we're also making proper use of the PlayStation 5's new DualSense controller features, aren't we? Yeah. Like haptic feedback. So, for example, uh, Nero's Blue Rose and Dante's Ebony and Ivory and um, other, maybe oh, some of those also have haptic feedback effects, so definitely try assigning those. If you, so uh, the DualSense controllers also have something called adaptive triggers. The triggers themselves can provide feedback to the player. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, um, well, they definitely are a new sort of feeling, I think. They have some resistance to them. Right, like you're opening up the throttle on a motorbike, you know, vroom vroom. Yeah, we were talking about that yesterday. The feeling of like revving a throttle, like the haptic feedback gives you a realistic sense of that through your fingers, I think. Make sure you give it a try once you get your hands on the hardware. All right, let's move on to the next slide. The next slide is Turbo Mode. This doesn't really have much to do with next gen, uh, but we did have a lot of requests for it. So we thought, you know, why not? Let's put it in special edition. Turbo mode lets you play the game at 1.2x speed. 
Nice. やっぱりターボといえば結構ね、あの、Turbo、really is stylish, and I think it really suits the DMC aesthetic, right? It's really hard to play, though. You know, everything comes at you a lot faster, so if you're not used to it, it's like your fingers won't even move quick enough to deal with it. Your muscle memory, you know, kind of starts to work against you because the extra speed means your timing will be off. Muscle memory makes it kind of hard. The EX Act and the Max Act with it will probably get particularly intense. You basically have to relearn everything from scratch, but it's a mode that really suits the devil gameplay, so I'd recommend that people who've already played through five、uh, maybe just try playing with Turbo Mode right from the start. Turbo Mode isn't the only new mode, though. We've got more. You'll figure this out right from the picture, but this is the legendary Dark Knight mode. Look how awesome it is, right? Look at all these bad guys. So, 4 had this mode as well, but the step up in hardware capability this time is quite impressive. So, we're able to throw a huge number of enemies at you right from the start. It looks like a completely different game. So, yeah, like fancy hardware and a couple of extra modes. But that's it for this game, right? That's all we got for you. Dude, dude no, you're forgetting the coolest things. This is like the best part. Come on. So, by popular demand, we've added Virgil mode, where you can have him as a playable character. So, we're going to introduce that now. You know,、uh, that's what you're all here for, right? We, we heard you all loud and clear, kind of. You all wanted virtual mode, so you're expecting us to show you some like, gameplay footage as well. And Matt's going, like, whoa, 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 hold on. Maybe that's not the best idea from a marketing perspective. You've got to keep some material in reserve, you know? Dude, don't be stingy. Come on, bro. All right, fine, fine, fine. All right, we showed off the basics, so we might as well. Let's show some actual video. Well, all right, first up, it's probably hard to understand just from still images.、Um, and while it was in the trailer, it wasn't that obvious there either. So we made a video that shows the same scenes with both ray tracing turned off and ray tracing turned on. This way, you can kind of see how much of a difference it makes. So let's go to the, the sound, the video. So you can see、uh, the difference when you switch from off to on. The reflections change quite a lot, don't they? They become a lot more dynamic. And it really brings the scene together. It makes it a lot clearer. The dark in the area is,、uh, the dark in the light areas pop a lot more. Kind of the contrast is much clearer. So it makes for a cleaner image. Also, do you see how、uh, it's calculating how the light is bouncing off of things? That is called real time ray tracing. It makes you wonder how those reflection effects worked without it, right? Easy.、Uh, the old effects were powered by the blood, sweat, and tears of the dev team. Ooh, these、uh, atmospheric effects are really nice too. Right, next up is Turbo Mode. Turbo Mode, Turbo Mode, Turbo Mode. It is something that you know and love from the special edition of 3, Back Again from the Grave. So every time. You know,、uh, people are always asking for it. So,、uh, what's the original point of the Turbo Mode? Well, originally it was from Street Fighter to Turbo, of course, but back when we were doing the PAL edition of Devil May Cry 3 for European PAL standard TVs, they ran at、uh, 50 hertz. So, to make sure、uh, that that version had the same gameplay experience, we ran the game internally at 1.2x speed. That way, when the game ran at 50 hertz, everything still moved the same as on the Japanese version, which was 60 hertz. So, we did that for the first、uh, time with DMC3. So, playing at 60 hertz with 1.2x boost turned out to be a lot of fun. And 
And, and that was, uh, and so we decided to end up leaving it because it was very fun. So, uh, and this time it is the same speed, right? Yeah, it is. We tested at 1.32, but it just felt much better at 1.2 in the end. Matt's adding that that's the only sort of thing a legendary director and planner could figure out. And let's move on, sorry about that, quick. Let's have a look at turbo mode in action. We made a nice video for it. So this is uh, Nero, and you can see the same combo with turbo mode on and off for comparison. So you totally did this like two hansels and like a controller in each hand, right? No, no. So like we recorded it once, then we turned on turbo mode, and then we uh, did it again. So, you know, just plain and simple, that's the easiest thing that we did. So, okay, yeah, V's movement also makes the difference really obvious. You can see the difference in the distance that they're traveling in the same amount of time. Doesn't it feel weird, though? Like, once you've played with turbo mode on, uh, kind of going back to regular mode must feel pretty easy. Yeah, it feels really incredibly slow. You're like, uh, dude, was it always this slow? Yeah, once you get a taste for turbo mode, there's no going back. And that's, you know, probably that feels why so many fans have re been requesting it. Uh, by the way, Itzno, you have another mode for us too, right? That's right, it is the Legendary Dark Knight mode. It's an exciting mode where a huge amount of enemies will come at you. We're able to... I think we're able to show you that on actual hardware today. Uh, Kumabe, are you ready to do this? I'm super nervous, but yeah, I'll give it my best shot. Press start. Wow. Dude, look at all of those enemies. Isn't this mission one? Yep. I've never seen this many guys uh, show up on mission one first. And look at Nero. It looks like he's got like these wings on him too, right? Yeah, that is his super character form. If you want to just play around with the legendary Dark Knight mode, uh, using a super character is the perfect difficulty level. If you want a bit more difficulty, you can use a normal character. Um, and then if you want to, and then if you want to like make life really difficult for yourself, you can play with uh, no power ups and so on. So using uh, super characters makes your attack radius a lot wider when you're using super characters and a devil trigger. Yeah, devil trigger does make things a lot easier. Rather, you know, if you don't use table trigger or other crowd fighting tools, you'll probably really struggle in this mode. But if you do play well enough in this, the style gauge fills up really quickly, right? Yeah, it's a great way to collect orbs um, and a good way to get red orbs. The next gen consoles really pack a punch too. So we're able to get a lot more enemies on the screen than I expected. You know, I doubt it was possible to show this many enemies and still have effects and image quality like this before. On the current gen systems, we're right up against the limits of the hardware with just the regular number of enemies. Yeah, and I'm not surprised. The graphics are amazing, even for those systems after all. Great, shall we move on? Next up is Dante. We're going to use Dante's super character form this time. So normally, you need to clear the main story. Uh, on the hardest mode, Dante must die mode in order to unlock Super Dante. Uh, but he's really incredibly powerful and probably a really suitable character for a legendary Dark Knight mode. All right, let's go. Whoa. Dude, look at all those enemies. Uh, Kumami, how many enemies are there about right now? Probably about 50. Uh, you know, it's getting kind of insane over here. Oh, wow, you went straight to Triple S. That was so sweet. Dude, it is quite the party out here in Dante Land. So, uh, you know, last time I played this fight, I kind of think there was like maybe 10 of these guys at most, but now there's 50? Dang. Cavalier is perfect for this situation. 
Yeah, I can see why. It has a wide area of effect. It's also got some damage resistance as well, so it's very great here. You know, graphically speaking, uh, there's effects flying everywhere too, which makes taking down that many enemies really satisfying. That is next gen power for you, right? It really feels like fighting a crowd. So now uh, we've kept everyone waiting long enough. Are we ready to show playable Virgil? Is everything set up? Let's get started already. Matt's like, okay, you have 10 seconds. I will only let you show 10 seconds of this. Everybody's waiting, and now you can hear him counting down the amount of time you have. This is just everybody's getting super excited. Go, show more. Be more flashy. Do all the crazy things. Two. We're on. And we're over. It's no, it's like, dude, that was not cool. Not cool, dude. Give him more time. So, um, so in, uh, we've made, so in legendary Dark Knight mode, um, ray tracing, high frame rate mode, and other features, DMC5 Special Edition, uh, that wouldn't be possible without next-gen consoles right from day one. Um, and we also made Virgil playable as well. So one thing that we have done, we've also trying to bring playable Virgil to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC as DMC5 DLC. We're planning on taking all the playable Virgil content from DMC5 Special Edition and bring it to the original platforms. So sorry that we don't have any more information for now, but please keep an eye out for more news about that. And you can see him, he's going, I bet people are like, oh, I'll no longer see people chanting Virgil DLC, Virgil DLC on my timeline. Thank you. Matt's like, all right, now time to recap. Devil May 5 Cry 5 Special Edition is a next-gen launch title. You'll be able to play it on PlayStation 5 on its launch day, and you'll be able to play it on Xbox Series X on Xbox Series X's launch day. So uh, DMC 5 Special Edition also has all of the DMC 5 Deluxe Edition content included, which means that the EX color pack is in there. You can get the Gerbera GP01, uh, which is an ultra version of Gerbera, and Bloody Palace are all in there from the start. So you don't even need to download a patch, you can just play it straight away. I hope you all enjoy it. And, oh, of course, you can play as Virgil. Virgil. Yes, he is really in there. Stop asking. You have to wait a bit longer for details, but if you can see a bit, but you can see a bit of it in the first trailer, and of course there will be more news coming later on. So, this seems like a good place to wrap things up. Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition will be available on launch day for both the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. The price will be 4,990 yen, which is about 50 US dollars. DMC 5 Special Edition uses everything that these next consoles have to offer, so we hope you'll enjoy seeing what they can do right from day one. Now, for our final thoughts, I'll go first. People have been asking to play as Virgil since DMC5 came out and even before then uh, as well. So I'm happy we're able to finally answer those requests, I think. It's really nice. So on top of that, I'm thrilled to have DMC5 SE as a next-gen launch console, a con title. I'd love for you to get hold of a next-gen console and then find out just what the console can do by playing our game Devil, Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition. So next, you, Kumawi-san. All right, it took me uh, about eight years for DMC for SE to come out. But this time, DMC 5's special edition is ready for uh, after just a year and a half. So I'm happy that I got to get the Virgil content to everyone so quickly. It's a lot of fun this time around as well. So please play it. And I hope you're all excited for the release day. Lastly, you're up, Itsuno. Hi, I'm Itsumo. Getting Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition ready in time for the same day launch with the new hardware is not an easy task, so the dev team is working really hard right now.
I'm uh, in the middle of doing some final testing myself as well. And I hope you all get a chance to enjoy the game along with all of the new hardware, uh, with the new hardware on launch day.